Hello friend, welcome to Marine Engineering Hub. This is your narrator Ravi Gupta. Today we're going to talk about turbo charger overall. Today is the last video of the main engine turbo charger. If you want to know more about the turbo charger and if you think any topic is left, I will keep posting that topic if you suggest me. And if you want me to make video on any other topic you can tell me i will post that topic video also so after the turbocharger video series is completed we are going to begin ballast water management series in which we are going to explain each and every topic from detail so let's begin the today video of turbocharger over oiling so first thing what we need to do before the overhauling is that we have to remove the filter we have to remove the tachometer sensor which are provided at the end here at the end here tachometer sensor is provided we have to remove the tachometer sensor and after that we have to remove this air inlet filter this air inlet filter need to be removed so we are removing the air inlet filter after this air inlet filter is removed we will see what next we will do so what i have written here Disconnect the tachometer, attach sling to the silencer, remove the nut securing the silencer to air casing and remove and land silencer securing if necessary. So I have told you earlier also that this is known as silencer. Why? Because it is also restricting the noise. Now after the silencer is removed, we will use a filler gauge and we will measure the clearance between the impeller and the casing on top on bottom on this side and on that side so using the filler gauge to measure the difference between the compressor impeller and air inlet casing measure at the top at the top at the bottom and both side record the reading and compare with the manufacturer data okay now what we have done till now we have removed this air inlet casing okay and after using the filler gauge we are taking the clearance between the air inlet casing and the impeller now let's see what we are going to do after that undo the socket bolt this is socket bolt undo the socket bolt holding the inner scroll this is the inner scroll we are holding okay inner scroll of the air casing we are holding and we are attaching a lifting gear and jacking off casing using the jacking bolt so basically what we are doing i will show you basically what we are doing we are trying to remove all the things which are present before the impeller so we were removing the air inlet casing we are removing the diffuser thing okay we are removing this diffuser thing so that this rotor impeller can be easily accessible so let's see so after we are jacking it off we will we can see this diffuser part remove and land safely taking care not to damage the end of diffuser this is a diffuser end okay this part this part this part so we have removed this and we have removed this whole arrangement before the impeller now we are moved to the gas side so same thing will gas side we will do we will remove this thing from the turbocharger so that we can easily assess the turbine now so let's see remove the top securing nut from the gas casing attach lifting tool and remove the remaining nut jack off casing using bolt so we are removing the gas casing side okay and this is the you can see nozzle ring so basically what is happening we have removed this part okay we have removed this part and we are removing this part so till now you can see the what we are trying we are trying to get fully access of the turbine and impeller bed and removing all the accessories which are preventing the access like air inlet filter casing diffuser casing here the gas inlet casing and nozzle ring now you are we are also doing the same thing as we have done in the 
compressor side, we are also taking the clearance in between the gas casing and the turbine blade at the top, at the bottom, at the board side. Using a filler gauge, measure the clearance between the turbine blade tip and the gas casing, record the, the reading and compare with the manufacturer data. So till now, same thing we have done. We are removing the accessories and we are taking the clearance between the gas casing and turbine blade and air casing and the impeller blade. Now, after that, place a clock, clock gauge on the shaft on the gas side. On the gas side, we are placing a clock gauge. Okay. And spin the rotor several times to break the lubable addition and then push and pull rotor to gauge the total thrust clearance. This is very, very important. This part is a very important part because we are measuring the L and M value. If you want to know what is L and M, what is K value, I have made a video regarding clearance in turbocharger. Please go and watch because this topic KLM is a very important topic. It's frequently asked in the exam. Now, so what we have done, we have taken the thrust clearance of the turbocharger by push and pull method. Now, remove the cap from the end of the shaft of the impeller end. Using a micrometer, measure the depth from the end of the shaft to the top of the nut. Record this ring. This is so that the difference can be made with refitting the impeller. Okay. So we are taking the reading from the impeller side also. Now, after that, we are placing the clock gauge here at the end and we rotate the rotor. So we are checking the oobling of the rotor. Means if the rotor is not oobling, it that is being checked and it should be within 0.01 mm because as you know turbocharger is a high running machine means it run at rpm of 10 to 12000 so there should not be any misalignment that we are checking after that what we are doing we are mounting a support shaft with a you can see the guide ruler type casing means basically what we are doing is screw the support shaft at the on the end of the shaft at the turbine and mount the support stay. This is a support stay, okay? And this is a support shaft with a ruler arrangement so that we can draw out the turbo charger turbine from the turbine side or from the gas side. Now, before drawing it out, what we are doing in the impeller side, the nut is fitted in a hydraulically tightened so. We are jacking it up and we are losing the nut on the compressor side of the impeller. So screw the hydraulic jack supplied on the thread on the impeller end of the shaft and back off one ton. After using a jack pump to 675 bar, loosen the nut with a Tommy bar, remove the jack and nut. So basically what is happening, we are removing the impeller when we are trying to remove the impeller so as you can see now as we have removed the air inlet casing volute casing only impeller is here so the impeller is also tightened on a nut okay this nut on a nut it is tightened so we have to remove this nut we, this nut is hydraulically tightened so we have to jack it okay and for after jacking it up we will remove this nut so after the nut is removed we can take this impeller out so let's see what we are doing. So we are jacking it up with 675 bar piston. And after that, we are rotating it and we are taking out the nut. And now we are taking out the impeller. We are taking out the impeller with the help of the screen arrangement. Okay. Now, after the impeller is taken out, taken out, it has been placed very carefully so that the impeller is not damaged. And now the mo most important thing begin. After the impeller is taken out, we will now take out the thrust bearing, thrust collar. Okay, let's see. Remove the impeller drive slip from the splint shaft by screwing two rod into the thread hole provided and pulling it off. So this is the drive slip, impeller drive slip. This is a slip type bearing. 
okay now we, what we are talking about is a sleeve type lubrication system sleeve type bearing so this is the sleeve we are taking it out okay now we will put a securing rod to support rod and we will take out the labyrinth housing and thrust bearing housing undo the bolt and screw into two support rod and remove oil labyrinth and thrust bearing housing okay this is how the thrust bearing housing look like so okay this is the we are securing the nut and we are pulling it off with hand or you can say with the wire sling and crane arrangement you can take it off okay this is how a thrust housing look like after that we will again take out the thrust collar this is the thrust collar we are taking out you screw through thread rod into the hole in the thrust collar and remove so till now what we have done let get a synopsis so what we have done here you can see we are jacking it off after that we are removing the nut slowly slowly and then we are taking the impeller out after that the sleeve comes after that the thrust housing come okay and this is how the thrust housing looked and then we are taking the thrust collar out and after that we are securing the rotor guide tube on the shaft lubricate with the oil and bolt on the guide support stay so now we have taken each and every component on the air side and now we are securing the rotor guide tube onto the rotor shaft and lubricating it with the oil on the guide tube support stay now okay so we have done all the part of the air side now we are going to the gas side on the gas side as i have told you we have already installed install the support stay and the support tube with the turbine side so now we will raise it we will raise it with this ruler lift the rotor shaft slightly by raising the ruler on the guide tube support at the turbine head so what we are doing we are raising the turbine blade little bit up so that we can slide it out easily okay so attach a strap to the rotor shaft support with the chain block and slide out the rotor out of the casing so now we are taking the rotor out of the casing now the question will come to your mind so what at the other end so at the other end what you have done we have installed this guide tube it is acting as a guide to help to maintain the alignment so that while the turbine is taken out okay attach a second strap to the other side of the rotor remove the support stay and slide rotor out of the casing so this is how the turbine blade is coming out and land in the cradle not to damage the turbine blade so we have taken out the turbine blade so this is how the turbocharger is overhauled so if you have got a clear idea i hope so i will just in two minute i will give you a synopsis what we are doing so what we are doing first we are removing this air inlet casing then we are removing this diffuser okay after that we are going to the gas side we are removing this gas inlet casing we are removing the nozzle ring after that what we are doing we are now measuring the clearance between the impeller and gas side turbine and gas side impeller and air side we are measuring the clearance after that we are removing this nut which we have secured here by jacking it up and removing the nut and we are taking the impeller out after the impeller is taken out here you are seeing the bearing is here okay but what turbocharger i am showing you this is a sleeve type here the sleeve is there and thrust collar is there so we are taking the sleeve out we are taking the thrust collar out and after that what we are doing we are providing a support we are providing a support stay to the rotor this is a rotor we are providing a support stay in the here and then we are sliding out the rotor from the this side so one thing you need to take care that the rotor is taken out from the turbine side why because the rotor and turbine is a single arrangement means it is attached permanently the turbine side is attached permanently to the rotor whereas the impeller is mounted either screwed or hydraulically tightened 
so this thing you keep in mind so i hope i have given you a clear idea regarding turbocharger overhauling if you still have a doubt please do comment below i will reply back thank you friend have a good day and those who are watching till end i am very grateful to you please do subscribe and please do share and one request and i put this request in my every video my every session that please do share in your social platform in your facebook whatsapp instagram wechat whatever platform you have social platform please do share so that more and more marine friend can know about this channel because this type of channels are very rare and i want that i can if i am helping i can reach out to many people as much as i can you please help me that's all i want i will keep posting this video like this video upcoming also thank you friend